Let's enjoy ourselves. It's a blessing to be able to dance and not need three business days to recover. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let's enjoy this and let's be excited. So welcome to Youth Convos, Unashamed Christ Influencer. Amen? Amen. So I'm just here firstly to tell you what it means to be unashamed. Amen. So being unashamed is to speak like Paul in Romans 1 verse 16 and to say that for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. And what does this mean? It means that we are not embarrassed to be associated with the gospel and we are not reluctant to proclaim the gospel because of fear of humiliation. What does this mean? Not only are we not ashamed of the gospel, but we are very proud. We are proud to be associated and affiliated with the gospel. And not only are we just proud to be spokesperson for this Jesus, but we also count it as an honor to be tied and to be connected to this Jesus. So that's what it means to be unashamed. And I hope that we are all unashamed to be influencers for Christ. Let's give a round of applause to this Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're about to sit. I promise just two more minutes. Now you're going to sit now, now. Um, but first, I want us to welcome the people who are going to be sitting on these beautiful chairs. I asked for a fourth one and they brought me an ottoman. So... Clearly, I'm not that important. I'll just sit on this side. And the important people are going to sit on the green chairs. But um, I want us to welcome... All right. Okay, cool, cool. Let me start with our beautiful pastor. The one who leads us. Pastor VTJ Masagona! (laughs) Thank you so much for having the vision and for allowing us to come here and together as young people. One thing that we pride ourselves as Calvary Christian Church is the fact that we are able to have conversations. Every single ministry, we have our own set days where we sit around a table, we sit around in a circle, and we have real conversations. If you're not a part of those, please do join us. Every month, we have a youth chillers. We talk about everything. This past week, um, we've been talking about finances, and it's a very interesting thing, actually, as you're growing as a young person, how to handle your finances in a good way, and we're doing that, so please do come and join us when we have those. If you are above 25 and you are single, there is a single sniff that happens. It's conversations for people like you. By single, I mean you don't have a ring on your finger. By single, I mean home affairs does not recognize you. So please, my sister, my brother, my brother, please do not, do not sit at home while others are having conversations. It helps build you up. It helps you be in the same space with somebody who's going through what you're going through. And we create those spaces for a reason. So please do come through. We do have those things. It's amazing. I'm still young for it, but soon enough I'll be joining if I have to. (coughs) If I have to. If by 25 there's no ring, I'll come. But if not, uh, I shall be excused. There's couples conversations for those who are married in the room. Okay, those who are married, there's couples conversations for those. So we do have those spaces for conversations, to have real conversations. So thank you, our leader. Thank you for allowing us to have those things. We appreciate you. Secondly, I want us to welcome the lead pastor of Musa Church in the room, Pastor Kogata. <laughs> Man, thank you for honoring our invite. I love your ministry. Um, oh, you're forced to. He forces you to. Damn, okay. That's news. <laughs> uh, ever since our, our church started having 8 o'clock services, I've always said the 1031 I'm going to Muso because you guys, you're not that far off and I love the ministry you guys are having. It's a beautiful one. You are leading us so well and you're leading our generation so well. So we thank you so much. Thank you for honoring our invite. And then lastly, the person who's, I don't know if they plant this, you're going to sit in the middle, just, just stay in the middle, okay. Um, I want us to welcome, um, I was told she's a music, a radio, everything, just a lot of things, ne? but you know what, no, not a radio, a radio presenter, <laughs> just not a radio, a radio presenter, okay, TV person.
personality, all these things, right? Um, but I always say, when I grow up, I want to be like you. And weirdly so, today when I was at work, I hope my company is not listening to this. Today when I was at work, I was actually watching an interview with Mpumili Dwaba, and I was listening to that, and I was so encouraged in my faith. And I love what you're doing in the, uh, in the industry out there with the influence that you have. You're doing a beautiful job, and you're encouraging us in the faith. So thank you so, so much. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Rari Santande Gisa! <laughs> Yes, so this is our panelist for the day. And as you were RSVPing, we made sure to leave um, a column for you to ask questions, which we are going to ask as we go forward. If you do happen to have a question somewhere in the middle, you can jot it down. We'll get some time to, um, to open up questions for the floor. In the meantime, I'm going to hand over to Tuso to um, ask the relevant questions. Is oh, yes, yeah, sorry, you may sit down. This is your moment. Okay, you can rest. Uh, sorry, I'm used to standing up for a long time. So um, you may be seated. <laughs> we young. We can stand for a long time. It's not a problem. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much, Una, for that wonderful introduction of our panelists. We are about to start with our youth convos. Amen? I'd just like to encourage everyone before we start to just open up your hearts open up your mind to receive, to learn, to engage, and also to be empowered. Amen? Yeah. So we are about to start. I would have loved our panelists. Oh, they have mics. Can we please test if they are working? Because we don't want anyone escaping a question want, because of a technical yes. problem. Want the radio, definitely. <laughs> the, the radio. <laughs> The radio is audible. The radio is working. <laughs> the radio That's is for sure. audible. That's great. We love that. Um, so we have a few questions for you, our panelists. And basically, we will be talking about the theme of being unashamed and also what it means to be a Christ influencer. So before we start, I'd just like each and every one of you to just give us two minutes of what it means for you to be in Christ and what it means for you to be unashamed. So we will start with lucky number one, Pastor Coqueto. <laughs> two minutes. That's sure. What do you say in two minutes? Yeah. <laughs> what do you what do you say in two minutes? I think uh, I think the most one of the scriptures that, that captures for me it so well is Romans Romans five eight where the Bible says um, while we were still sinners, uh, God demonstrated his love for us that he sent his only son to come and die for us. That I, I was not attractive to him because of my good qualities. Sure. It was actually my brokenness Amen. that attracted his mercy and grace towards me. Yes. It, 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 we live in a world where people love you, follow you, subscribe to you because you are the best, you are associated with who and who, you are Rorisa and all those kind of things, right? Uh, there was shade, a bit of shade. Uh, uh, yeah. It's going to happen the whole night. <laughs> yeah. Can't so, believe I'm sitting between two of them. Actually, I walked into it. So we live in the kind of world that you need to perform at a certain level for you to be loved and liked. Yes. But that scripture says, while we were still sinners, God looked at us and says, Wow. That is so broken. I love it. I'm That's gonna amazing. go and die for him. Sure. Yes. And that that for me, man. Then I'm like being loved so much, my natural response should then be unashamed. Like yeah. That that should just be my natural. I'm like this kind of love. No man. The the least I can do. Is be unashamed because yeah. when I was broken, he was not ashamed of me. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. We will move on to lucky number two, Pastor TJ. I nearly thought you were going to say Pastor Gogi Sang, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th I think for me, one of the greatest uh, gifts that one can carry is the fact that a holy savior. Uh, the holy king left worship in heaven sure. mm. uh, for those 33 and a half years there was no angel coming to say holy holy you are and all of that, that stuff 
he left this beautiful place and he came for this thing that was me. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I find it so encouraging to realize that Jesus, when he saw me, he did not want me to come to him. He decided to come to me. Amen. And now that he has washed me and he has cleansed me and he's made me whole, in this world that is upside down, why can't I definitely, committedly come to him? Yes. And dress him without any shame and talk about him without any shame. And I think the last thing I want to say about unashamed for me is when I enter the room, I don't have to declare who I am because my life already speaks. Amen. So my life should be so Christ-centered because he made his life centered around me when he was on the cross. And the Bible says that he gave up his own life when he was on the cross. He didn't die. Yes. He could have withheld it. Mm. He could have said, I'm not letting go. Yes. But he says, I'm giving it up because I'm worth it. Yeah. And if I was worth it, he's worth it for me in this world. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now we are going to move to... Lucky number three. Lucky number three. Please start with me because can you can use the answers. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Uh, salvation. And I, and I think, uh, you know, my brothers have kind of said it so beautifully. It's, it's, it's an unexplainable love, right? That, that finds you in whatever corner that you'll find yourself. I grew up in the church. So church is, outside of my name, church has always been there. It's one thing that I've known. But I think when I started tapping into being unashamed is when I started having relationship. So for me, it's in relationship. It's far more easy to be unashamed yes. of someone. So, yes. so, so somebody can be ashamed of, 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 of their parent because their parent doesn't look a certain way in society. But if you know how hard your parent works to feed you, clothe you, yes. and protect you, and give you everything you want. Yeah. So it's only in relationship where I can confidently say I stepped into a place where I can go, I'm unashamed of this because I know where he fetched me. Yes. I know how far he's brought me along. I know that I'm undeserving of this grace, this mercy, this love. And, and, and out of relationship, then I can comfortably walk unashamed because it's not about you all. Yes. It really is just about me and him. Yes. And if you get to experience it, it's a default setting. It's not the... Do you understand? Yeah, he came for me. He also came for you, but he also came for me. Yes. So I settle in that he came for me. And, and, and being unashamed of him makes me function well with him. Yes. Makes me learn how to love him. Makes me learn him. So I, I don't think you can function in the unashamed outside of relationship. Yes. And relationship comes from salvation. Yeah. So you actually can't speak about unashamed without the core being salvation. Wow. Um, yeah. That is amazing. That is amazing. This is going... <laughs> This is going to take me off from the questions that I have because you have all said wonderful things that I have follow-up questions on because we have heard from Pastor Koketo that um, he he loved us. So how can we be how can we be ashamed? We are loved. Pastor TJ said that he came. That means he values us. He puts value on me, so why should I be ashamed? And I think that one of the things that puts shame is that we don't see our own value. But we should see our value through the eyes of God. And now just to drive off of what you said, something so important, that relationship is very important. My next question was, what is a Christ influencer? But I'll add to it and say, what is the importance of relationship in being a Christ influencer? So an influencer in the way that we understand, we've got young people here, right? Shout out. So an influencer, in terms of what we've come to know it from a social construct and communication and marketing, is an individual who has the potential to sway someone's buying power. Right, So it's me having the ability to make you buy Adidas because I'm always wearing Adidas. And by virtue of you thinking I'm cool, you feel that you would buy the shoe and you would feel or look as cool as I look. Right, um, But that's a dangerous space to be in. 
right? Because it means that I need to do the convincing. I almost want to argue that we do lean towards influencing when it comes to the kingdom, but it works slightly different. You have an influencer, then you have a thought leader. A thought leader doesn't change how you buy. He changes how you think and how you perceive the world. Yes. Right. So our aim is maybe it's great for us to start as influencers for the kingdom of God. Right. Make people go, hey, I wonder what, what, what is it about you? You know, why do you sound the way you sound? But it's got to get to a point where we now are active in the kingdom where we're changing lives. Yeah. And this is where the power of the Holy Spirit comes in. So we can't allow ourselves to stay at an influencer level. Yes. That's very, that's when the Bible says, when we were young, we drank milk. Yes. But there's a time when we have to eat meat. Yes. So it's a great place to start. But is there impact? Oh. Is there life changing? Yes. Did they just buy the shoe and then next month another celebrity put on another type of shoe and they went for that? Mm. Or did you change their minds that they are loyal to this brand because you wear it? Yes. Did you change their mind? Did you change their world? Did you impact the way that they do life? Mm. Uh, uh, so, so it's good to be an influencer. Yes. But, but I would hope that at some point we drive towards wanting to be thought leaders. Meaning we, we challenge the status quo. Yes. So they say, uh, 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 you know, the alphabets are the alphabets. And we go, no, in actual fact, they're not the alphabets. God said man and woman. Yeah. And as uncomfortable as that sounds, that's our faith. Yeah. Yes. Right? That's thought leaders. Yeah. Yes. That's not influencers. Because yeah. if you're an influencer, you, you're too scared of being canceled. Yeah. Love that. I love that. Do you, do you understand? Yes. So, so, so we've always got to be careful in terms of what it is we're doing, where we're starting, but what the end goal is. Is that I can't just wear a shirt that says Jesus, but there's no impact and there's no power. Yes. Right? And we see that tattered all over the world, that, that there were those who proclaimed Jesus and there were those who moved in the power. And I guess we've just got to decide where we fall in. So yes. it's great for us to influence. Use the spaces that you have. Use the environments that God has given you. But that's why we say pray. That's why we say read the word. That's why the Bible says study the word to show yourself approved. The same way you study to show yourself approved as an accountant. The same way you study yourself to show you approved as a, a doctor, a lawyer. Study yes. the word to show yourself approved. The only reason you're allowed in that space to function in that space is because you've approved, you've shown that you qualify. Same thing in the word. Yeah. Yeah. We can't just be all talk and all the posters and all the nice things on Instagram, but when we come into a space, we're not changing a space. Yes. And if greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, then surely by our mere presence. Yes. Sure. I, I, I want to jump in. Sorry. I could see you I itching. I could see you I itching for it. But, but I, I want to say that on top of what Wagisang has said, Paul writes something strong. He says, they love the form of godliness, sure. but they deny its power. And that's, and that's literally where we find ourselves. We, yeah. find, we find people that love church, yeah. but they deny the power of transformation. Yeah. Absolutely. So when transformation wants to come their way, they, they, they want to influence people into what never changed them, yeah. into sure. what never impacted them. And yeah. I'm going to use brand ambassador as, as an example of brand influencing as an example again. Yeah. If, 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 and I'm sorry to say this, but if Nike comes with a higher offer, yeah. then we ditch Adidas. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because Adidas never transformed us. Yes. We just loved its form. Yes. We, we were never transformed by Oof. it. Yes. And I think the journey we must really, we must really pursue is that transformation must be real. It must be tangible. Absolutely. When somebody meets sure. you 10 years later, they must miss you in the mall because you don't look like what you used to look like 10 years ago. There's a big transformation when they hear you on radio and your radio wing. They're like, is that the same person? It's throwing some shade there. Is that the same person? <laughs> and, and then they realize that there has been something that has happened in their lives. Yes. And if we can be a generation that chases transformation, not attraction only, not, not influence only, yes. but transformation, then we can move away from just the form of godliness, but to actually carrying God with us. Yes. Because that's the power. Oh, wow. I love that. Can we give that a round of applause? Can I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disturb you. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Man, you know, I, I Daniel, Daniel 3. Someone needs to quote the scripture here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shade is strong, eh? <laughs> So, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar says, yeah. any person 
who goes against their God, that person will be killed. He is not a Christian person. Come on. He is a king of a nation. Come on. He doesn't believe in God. Yeah. But he makes a declaration and say, anyone, so what, what has happened with those four Hebrew boys is that when an opportunity to eat pagan food was presented before them, which was nice and amazing, sure. they said no to that. Sure. And, and the king is watching. So they, they obeyed God in the light of great opportunities. Yeah. And then the fire comes. They don't obey God only in the fire. They also obey him at the table of feasting when, sure. when things are going well. Because yeah. it's easy to obey God when you want him to take you out of a, out of a tight situation. So good, sir. Sure. But they obey him even when the opportunity was in their favor. They're like, we will not be favored when we are disfavoring him. Yeah. And that obedience to God changes the complexion of the whole nation. Absolutely. Sure. It's not just a church. Yes. The whole, the, the, an, a, a pagan God yeah. makes a declaration that this God is the real thing. Yeah. If there's so many of us in this city, why has it not been declared mm. a Christian city? Come on. Oh, wow. sure. If we are influencers and and we are whatever we want to call ourselves how do we measure the impact of what we're doing if if sure. in fact now the world is going the other way yes. they are saying so soon this conversation will be illegal to have absolutely yes yeah yeah you know what we think when people only are crying and i don't know we're, we're happy that people were crying at our gatherings has their mind changed Mm. Are they going to go out there and make rules yes. in keeping with this God we are yeah. proclaiming? So, well, I don't have the answer. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> it would be great question. to give answers <laughs> to your question. That's a good question. <laughs> it's a great question. Um, wow, wow, wow. I think what I have just taken from what you have all said is that don't just say you are for Christ, have impact. I think that's what you also said. And keeping yes. your repentance. Yes. Matthew 3. We love a pastor who quotes scripture. Amen. <laughs> Write it down. Yeah. Write it down. <laughs> okay, so now moving on, I have a question, right? Uh, pastor Koketo said something which is very profound that um when you are in a space amongst unbelievers you still need to be able to stand for what you believe in when there are nice things around so that means that there's a certain standard that we should have when we call ourselves christ influencers can you please speak on that standard that we need to have I think the standard is very clear. But, you know, the, the first thing that God puts in front of us uh, is that before you are put life and death, I think oftentimes we, we treat God like he forced us into a relationship with him. Right? In order for you to walk in true salvation, it's a voluntary act. You voluntarily say, I choose you as Lord. I choose to die to self and to resurrect with you, right? So he puts life in death. He tells us what death is. He tells us what life is, right? So I think that's the first thing that you have to understand, that there is life and that there is death, yeah. right? And that under each principles function, meaning there are things that you can do to accelerate death yeah. and there are things that you can do to accelerate life. And if you look then at the whole word, it's an explanation of that. You see nations in and out. You see rulers in and out. You see prophets in and out. At some point having to make a decision whether they're going God's way yes. or their way. Yeah. right? And I think it lies at if you are going to live a life that even if nice things are put in front of you. What the three Hebrew boys were, for me, bringing across yeah. was that God is sovereign. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. yes. Yeah. Not circumstantial. Yeah. He's sovereign. Yeah. So, so how do I live my life? Is God the final authority in my life? Mm. Yes or no? Yeah. And you've got to ask yourself that in the truest sense. Not because I come to church on a Sunday. Mm. 
Mm. Not because the pastor knows my name. Not because I tithe once yeah. in a while. Yeah. Not because I'm in the youth convos. No, no, no. Is God the final say? Do I do things based on my feelings or do I do based, you know, do I base it on righteousness? Do I do things based on how the circumstances are around me or do I do what the word of God says, right? And again, I will say that comes from relationship and reading and spending time with the word. Yes. Because how else do you know how to live? Yeah. It can't just be on a Sunday morning. Yeah. It, it can't be. Sure. It can't be Sarah Jakes's clip on Instagram. It can't be. You can follow all the Christian social media platforms. It cannot be. Jesus can't come for our packaged one minute reels. Wow. It's got to be a hunger That's and a desire that you, you seek after him. And, and I almost want to quantify it by saying that it, it can only come from relationship and seeking God for yourself. Because the things that God is speaking to me about might not necessarily be the things that he's asking you to correct. Yes. So if I'm using you as my benchmark, I'm in trouble. Yes. If I'm using T.D. Jakes as a benchmark, I'm in trouble. Yes. If I'm using Murute as a benchmark, I'm in trouble. Jesus is the benchmark. Yes. He's the standard. Was he kind? Was he loving? Was he diligent? Did he seek God's approval in everything that he did? Did he spend time with God? Was he in prayer? Did he do the works of God? Yes. And if you're not doing it, yeah. then we don't have to have a deliverance for that. It's a very simple answer. No, then you're not living your life according yeah. to Christ. Yes. It doesn't need us to come and unpack it for you. It doesn't need a spiritual answer. It's a, is he the authority? Sure. Yes or no? Yeah. And if he's not, my question to then is, why? Who then is the authority? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because there's got to be an authority. Yeah. Yes. We've just got to figure out who is in charge at this present moment in time. Uh, uh, but is God sovereign? Is God sovereign? Yes, you can give me all the money you want to give me. Is he sovereign? You know, you can take me to all the cool places in the world. Is he sovereign? You know, you can trend on social media. Is God sovereign? And if he does not become sovereign, then life and death. We've chosen death. Wow. As, as hard as that sounds. Yes. It's the truth. Sure. That is scary. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it is. You, you, you know, I think sometimes... And it's, 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 I don't know what it is. Maybe we come from an era where, uh, where I guess Christianity, you know, there was the prosperity era, then there was the yeah. grace and yeah. mercy era. Yeah. And I think those eras were great. I think it was great for us to know that God can give us everything we want. I also think it was great that we knew that there was grace and there was mercy. But I think we forgot to tell people that God is just. Yes. yes. That he's the God who wipes out a nation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That he's the God who wipes out a nation to bring in his people into a land. Do you know that everybody had to remove, be removed in the promised land for the Israelites to come into the promised land? He's that God. But, but we make him cute. He sounds, you know, like, oh, he's so loving and so merciful and so great. And he just wants to hug you. No, 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 no. He's the God who wipes out. Yes. Yes. He's the guy. He's the God who despises disobedience. He's a father. Who hates pride. Sure. And, and we can't live in these, you know, fallacies of believing that it's airy fairy, you know, sing the nice song and the spirit and the atmosphere. You say we can cry all we want. Is there impact? Yes. Is God sovereign? And if He's not, then we're not living it yet. Sure. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Koketo. Can you add to that? With the scripture. So With the scripture. Matthew sixteen twenty four. <laughs> Matthew 16, 24. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, it is Matthew 16. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason yeah. why he's here. <laughs> that is the scriptural that, reference. Yeah. Actually. yeah. Like, Jesus says you must die. Yeah. That's it. Like, do you understand the gravity of that? He says, guys, and these are guys have been following him for three years. Sure. They've been walking with him for three years. <laughs> At this point, he says to them, if you want to follow me, but, what have we been doing all this time? He says, if you really want to be my followers, sure. you need to die to yourself. Can I tell you, our greatest uh, enemy from walking with God is not the devil. Yeah. It's self. Facts. If self can die, 
the devil is defeated. Absolutely. Amen. That's why Paul says, that's why Paul says it's no longer I who lives, yes. but it's Christ in me. So it means whatever tactic you bring, I'm like, I'm dead, bro. Like uh, you are talking to a corpse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you take understand? Take it up with Jesus. Yeah, take it up with Jesus. Yeah. Like that, that, that guy is a guy who is in charge. And that one, he defeated you on the cross. That's why you can't take it up with him. Yeah. That's why you can't take it up with him. I mean, easy target. The greatest, yeah, the great. I mean, easy, you are right, but you are easy an easy target. target only if you are still about yourself. Yeah. Only when you are still about yourself. So, if we really want to influence, and and the standard is Christ, self must die. We must do what John does. John says, may I decrease that you may increase so that when people look at me, all they see is you. And that's why Corinthians says, as we behold him as in a mirror, we are transformed into the same image with ever increasing glory. Where is our focus? Our focus is on ourselves. That's why we are becoming more of who we are, which is brokenness. But if we focus on him, we become more of who he is, which is love, light, and life so, good. so if we really want to influence with him as a standard number one we need to die yeah. and it's a daily decision where you're like you know what i'm going to die i'm going to die so it's no longer a question of how does it feel to me your feelings don't matter anymore they did yeah they are dead yeah. <laughs> what do i think about it what no is my truth? No one cares. No one no cares. cares, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about it? Uh, Heaven doesn't care. We are. So it's no longer, how do I feel about it? What's politically correct? Yeah. What is popular? What is trending? What do I think about it? Yeah. Is what glorifies him. That sure. is, that is the, the filter with which I make decisions. Yeah. Does it glorify Jesus? That's it. Yeah. Not... Are they going to like me? No. Does it glorify Jesus? No, you know, we're just going to chill. The Bible doesn't say it's sin. Hey, does. does it glorify Jesus? Oh, yeah. No, but I'm just going to sip. The Bible doesn't does say anything. Hey, does, does it glorify, glorify Jesus? Jesus? Because we are smart. We, we know how to find loopholes. Yeah, it was cool. Hey, hey, English, high level. We can come. I'm like, I can see all of that. Does it glorify Jesus? If it doesn't, don't. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you so much for that. Pastor TJ, what can you tell us? <laughs> can we give that a round of applause? Does it glorify Jesus? Pastor TJ. Sure. Man, I, I don't know what else you can say um, on top of all of that. Say food is ready. <laughs> <laughs> let us break yeah, bread. Let us break, <laughs> let us break bread. But I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm on literally the same tip uh, that my friend Koketso is on. Um, and I was literally sitting, when Wogisang was speaking, I was literally sitting here. And I said to myself, and remembering what Jesus says, Jesus says, unless the grain of wheat... Yeah. Falls dies. down to the ground sure. mm. dies. and dies, mm. it will remain alone. Sure. Now, I, I want to settle that just for a couple of seconds because there is no death, yeah. we are still alone. Yeah. Right? And I want that to sink in for a bit. Sure. We, are still, we are still this small group of people that can turn a city around mm. Mm. because mm. there's been no death. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jesus was like, multiplication is not. In your fame, multiplication is not in how much reels you share. Multiplication mm. is not in your TikTok. Multiplication is in the death of you. Yeah. When you die, you become a fertilizer so that there can be a catalyst of exponential growth to this journey. And in our workplaces, we're not dead. Yeah. As believers, in our Instagram, we're not dead. In our TikTok, we're not dead. In our Twitter, we're not dead. We're still very much alive. And that's why there's no reproduction. He says, but if this grain of wheat falls down to the ground and dies, then it produces much. Yeah. And, yeah. and when self has not died yet, we can forget about reproduction. Yeah. We, can, we can just pack up and go and, 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 and close up shop and let another shop come and take over yeah. here yeah. And, and do its business. Yeah. 
And, and Jesus says so strong, he says, occupy till I come. Another yeah. version says, do business yeah. till I come. And my, my biggest question that I want to throw back to everybody that's sitting in the room is we are, we are chatting and we're talking, we are throwing, you know, bombs and you're like, woo, 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 woo. When the woo is gone, yeah. when the hype is gone, yeah. mm. when young converse is over, mm. when there's no panel sitting before you, the question is, have you died? Wow. Have you died? Yeah, because when, when you die, and, and I say this constantly, when, when Oweksan quoted, uh, you know, the book of Deuteronomy, that before you have put life and death, therefore choose life. The interesting thing about that, Jesus, or God does not say, I choose for you. Yeah. Mm. He says, therefore choose life. Yeah. So the power we have is that, the, the lack of power we have, or the lack of power that is present in our lives, is because we all have not yielded to him. We have not. And we're, we, we, we have yielded to our feelings, we've yielded to our thoughts, we've yielded to our ideologies, we've yielded to the latest star on TikTok, we've yielded to all those things, but we have not yielded to him. And constantly we sit, and that is why we constantly hear a word, and we have to ask a friend first. My friend, is, is that true? Yeah. Is, is that what the Bible says? Because you don't know your word. Yeah. Yeah. You don't spend time in your word. You Google it. Yeah, you go, yeah you're there. Yeah. So, no, you're literally there. Yeah. You're literally saying... Google, tell me what and tell me where. And, and the last thing I want to say is when you Google, just, just ask yourself who owns Google. And who can, can you know, drive the narrative of what answer you get. Oh, wow. I'm hurting. Google, search. Yeah. <laughs> we can't be those Christians. We, we can't be. He left me, Google, search. <laughs> I'm heartbroken, Google, search. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. That's literally it. Wow. Let's give this a round of applause. Are we still here? So I have a follow-up question, right? Uh, this is also triggered because we have two pastors of churches who are part of the panel. And I'd like to direct this question to our pastors. What responsibility does the church have in driving Christ influences? I ask this because it seems as if there's a movement of religion influences and not Christ influences. And my understanding from everything that you have just said is that if I'm a Christ influencer, I have a relationship. So I am an outsider. I don't know Christ. I've come to your church and I'm met with religion and I'm not met with Christ. How, how can we solve this problem as a church? Because when people look for Christ, this is one of the first places they go to, the church. But they're met with religion and not Christ. Can you speak on that? And Rodrisang, you can add as well. <laughs> They must, they must not come to our churches. Cut, cut, cut. Go away. Leave. Allow, allow. Yeah. allow. <laughs> uh, listen, listen to what Paul says in Galatians 4. He says, And I am in labor pains again that Christ be formed in you. Yes. And I think, unfortunately, we have obsessed over having congregants Yes. than people who are transforming Amen. into the likeness of Christ. Yes. Our concern is how they honor us, mm. not how they represent Christ. If you are respecting me, I'm more comfortable with that. If you are honoring me, I'm more comfortable with that than you forming into the likeness of Christ. Paul did not care about who was honoring him or not. Yeah. He was more concerned about who is forming into the likeness of Christ. So we are busy building congregations as opposed to advancing the kingdom of God, of sending people. So our joy is not the city changing, it's how many are sitting in front of us. Our goal as pastors in this day and age, unfortunately, is how many can I gather, not how many can I send. Mm. Wow. So, and for them, for us to successfully gather them, they must look like us. Mm. They must bow to what we're saying. 
So we're concerned about them sounding like us, looking like us, behaving like us because we can control them. That's why when a young person in our church says, hey, I have a, this thing in my heart, I want to go and start a ministry, then we start telling them you are demon-possessed, da, 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 because the aim was never to release, it, it was, was to always collect. to build an empire, yes. and then I can brag to TJ and say, I have a bigger church than yours. Sure. I mean, you're going hard, though. <laughs> He's going in. He's going in. Oh, my God. So, I think we need to go back into understanding what has God called us for. We are servants of God. We are not, you see, it's, these titles, they are problematic as well. Yes. Right? And, and before you are even a servant of God, you are a child of God. Have you mastered being a child before you want to be a servant? Has what you want to preach done its work inside of you? First. First, sure. it's like when you shoot a uh, 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 what do you call this? Uh, uh, not an arrow, that that, that thing, um, that a big gun. gun. Yeah, bazooka. that big gun, the bazooka. bazooka. When you it shoot it, it, it kicks you first. Mm -hmm. You are the one who who go. You feel, it, the, impact, you feel yeah. the impact yeah. first, and then and then it goes. And if you are weak, you are going to fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can't send them because we have it has not beaten us yet. Religion sometimes. The thing is, you're asking us to, to give them Christ. We have not met him. How can you give what you don't have? <laughs> oh, man. I'm so stressed. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> calm down. Rory, <laughs> can I skip to this question? <laughs> no, we want to hear. We want to hear. Pastor TJ? Uh, so... <laughs> So I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy just opening scripture here because I, I want to read something, um, and I don't want. I wanted. I don't. I didn't want to quote it. I wanted to read it, word for word, so that you can hear what the scripture says. And Ephesians four verse verse number eleven. From verse number eleven, the Bible says, "And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, yeah. for the equipping of the saints, yeah. for the, the doing work. of the work of the ministry." Yeah for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes. Till we all come to the unity of the faith yeah. and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Yeah. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Yeah. That we should no longer be children yeah. yes. tossed to and fro and carried about every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Amen. We have unfortunately, and I'm, I'm still there, I'm still where, where, where uh, Pastor Gogetso is. We have unfortunately gathered people so that they lift and brush our egos. Yeah. We have come to a place where we gather people so that my name is great and yeah. it's powerful. And, and I, I, I'm going to be so blunt and so, and so direct. Unfortunately, when you need the biggest egos, you must gather pastors together. How? Cut. Cut. This is not recorded. You know, can, can, can y'all blur my face? <laughs> I was not there. <laughs> I was like, not there. Uh, uh, sit in a room with, Absolutely with, so. with some yeah. people yeah. Facts. that yeah. say they've been called. Woo. And you will hear how much they brag yeah. about how big of a seating capacity they carry. Mm -hmm. so, you will hear them about how they brag about how much appreciation they receive. Yeah. Me and my friend were talking about this just last year sometime. Yeah. But you will hear about how much they brag about. And you are like sitting in a place where humility should reign. Mm -hmm. But pride is king. Look. Yes. Because everybody wants to tell us my, 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 my building cannot take them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Three services. Yeah. You, you, ah. I, I need a ah. bigger building. I'm telling I, you. <laughs> and, and I'm going to three services. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> While we're at it. While we're, <laughs> while, while while we're, we're at it. They pull even the antics around it. Yeah. Three yeah. Services very yeah. Soon. Yeah. Like, and it's sad oh. that, that, that the reason why we are dealing with this is because we fail to understand Jesus would only go into Zacchaeus' heart to eat with him. And the life of Jesus transforms Zacchaeus over a table. Of a food. tax collector. Yeah, literally a tax. He 
was he was fraudulent to the core. Yeah, sure. You know, he was fraudulent to the core. Worse than a sinner. Worse than a sinner. Yeah. But the church, watch this. The church which wanted to be uplifted, which was the Pharisees, the Sadducees in the synagogue, were arguing, why does he sit with sinners? Yeah. yeah. Because number two, we are afraid to get our hands dirty. We don't like the work. Yeah. We don't like the work. That's why the transfer market is busy. Yeah. Sure. There's no transformation market. Yeah. yeah. Sure. From, one church, from, from, from one, one church to the other. From one church to the next. Yeah. We are so excited when we receive you. And like, oh, we we're not concerned where you came from. We we're concerned about how deep your pocket is going to be and how you're going to support our ministry. And they say your church is a better church. And yeah, your church is a better church. In fact, we even support how you talk bad about his church yeah. when you came from his church. And like, yeah, I, I knew it. It's real. It's fake. No, yeah, God, thank you for confirming me. My God. And the third thing is we want to build from each other's brokenness. Oh, wow. We don't want to build the church of God. Mm. He says, upon this work, I will build my church. Not by this, by this rocks, I will build my church. Upon this rock, which this is Christ. Rock. The, yes. This rock, which is Christ himself. Right? And now, his brokenness becomes my, my building material. Or oh, your stepping stone. Yeah, or oh, oh, my stepping stone. Thank God that church closed. I'm so excited. If you need a church that is spirit-filled, come this side. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, we've got no, no desire, right? And Daniel says something very strong when he interprets the dream of the writing on the wall. He says, mene, 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 tekel, right? And then he says, you have been weighed. And you have been found to be wanting. And I ask, I ask myself constantly, when you ask this question, I ask myself, Lord, when you weigh me, what do you find? Is the weight in my ministry. And, and this is a story I've told even, even in the church before. And I said, God asked me a question the other day. He says to me, do you preach because you're a believer? Or do you preach because it's your job every Sunday? It's your vocation. Yeah, there we go. It's your vocation. It's a side hustle, in mm. fact. He says, why do you do it? Do you do it because it's... Do you actually believe this thing that you preach? And it was a stern and a strong conversation. I realized this is the trick, Mruti. We are not saved before we even get into this thing. And that's why this place is, is infiltrated by chances. Because we are all playing. We are in that space where we're just playing and we're not doing the right things. It's a formula. Yeah, it's a, it's a formula. Right? And, like and depression. No. <laughs> no, no, no. When we are done. It's good when we are done. I'm going to question the inspiration. I'm going to ask pass me over. And lastly, I want to yeah. say this, right? I want to say this. Maybe these are the right questions we need to ask our generation mm. so that we become the right generation to yes. represent Christ the right yes. way. We represent Christ the right way. Yes. One guy asked me, had the audacity to ask me, he says, are you a pastor of a church? I said, yeah, I'm a pastor of a church. And you're driving a polo? I said, yeah. What's wrong? Because we think the better you drive, the more anointed you are. Yet Jesus never had a car. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure his sandals were like, with their sandals. Yeah, it was, it was some, it was like some proper sandals. Yeah. Yeah. He had to go sure. because he didn't have one. He did. Yo, I can only answer this question from the other side. Yes, please. Um, the first time I started preaching the word of God, I was in grade two. I would take a bus, sneak a Bible to school and try to emulate what I heard at church on Sunday. And like I said earlier on, I kind of grew up in the church, so the word has always been around me. Thank God for my family because my mother encouraged us. I think I did my first mission trip when I was 11 or 12 to Swaziland for 10 days. So the word of God was in learning and also in application from a very young age. But growing up in the church, you get to a point where you realize that you're only allowed to grow to a certain point. Mm. Yeah. Then, sure. how do I put sure. this politically correct? Sure. We are encouraged from the pulpit to go out and tell people about Jesus. Mm. Then when you start telling people about Jesus, then there's red tape. Yeah. Yes. You, you can tell Jesus about people here, yes. but not there. And, the you can, and, and you can do it like that yes. and not like that. Sure. And, 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 and my only encouragement, because it's going to take Jesus to fix it, yeah. yes. is that if you really do zone in and focus on your relationship with Christ 
and he really is sovereign and you really did die to self you will know what to do when god says do it sure and at the same time you must be able to ask yourself am i now listening to what's happening around me or am i listening to what god is saying um and another thing baruti baruna ke bato right they also face the same things that we face they also face the same challenges they also have the same shortcomings so uh, somebody once taught me in fact he called me schizophrenic not so long ago on tv uh, many years ago uh, <laughs> it's actually it's so weird cuz we were both still christian then now i'm schizophrenic uh when we were both schizophrenic uh he he said to me so now that i think about it it's mad weird It's mad weird. So he's healed now. He's healed. Yeah, he's I'm, healed. I'm yeah. still I'm still I'm still in the still yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm still in the mad house apparently. Uh he said to me funny enough he said eat the bread and not the plastic. And he said there's a lot of things that cover the bread. And if you're too hasty, you eat the bread along with the plastic. Take your time to take the bread of life out of the plastic meaning be careful of the environment where you receive God sure. and make sure that you pull out God from the environment and that you're not stuck in the environment and trying to find God that you must always pull the bread out right and and that's what you eat and 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 yes our pastors will fall short yes men and women of god will fall short some of your favorite gospel influences will fall short but they were never there as the mark Yes. Christ has always been the mark. So so you shouldn't fall because they're fallen. You shouldn't take a take because they're take a take. The same grace you need is the same grace they need. Yes. So I think more than anything our prayers that God will bring a revival in our churches where people will hunger after God, where they'll run after God as individuals and corporately, right? Um and I think a time like that is coming. But just don't slow down. Yeah. with you doing what God has called you to do. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah. Yes. And also don't be too hurt for too long. Yes. A lot of people leave church. You you you, you know the pastor said no you can't do that now when I church head how so great anything. Yes, he was wrong that day. Doesn't mean that the anointing over his life is gone. Yeah. Because he made a mistake. You still listen. You still submit. You still understand that God can still use him or her yeah. to still deliver a word that you need in season, right? So I think it's a two-way street. We all need Jesus. Yeah. Uh, um 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 and yeah man, pastors are tricky. But we need them. <laughs> okay. Side eye. No 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 no. They're tricky. I I think bombastic they actually side eye. no no bombastic. I think they actually emulate a lot of the times what we need to recognize as a society. that there's a complex that we have once we're in God that makes us feel that we're better than everybody else. Yeah. Sure. And and that's a dangerous space to be and that can happen to your pastor but that can also happen to you. Yes. Ru wena o lapholoswa jalo sona na hore batho ba ba believe ngoma sang ngoma ka o fela ba edile. Ha o soka o nkana ko o bua Jesu ho bona. You've canceled them already and Jesus is looking at you and be like yo bro I died for them. What do you mean you're canceling them? Sure. So so we can all fall into that trap where we're on a pedestal that hinders us from bringing Jesus. If it can happen to them, best you believe it's happening to us. So we 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 the same applies to all of us. That's basically what I'm saying. Yes. It applies to all of us. Yeah. Okay. And unfortunately Jesus yes. will never trust his church in trust his church to robots. He will mm-hmm. never entrust his church to animals. Yes. He will never entrust his church to angels. He will entrust it to people. Yes. Ooh, that was hard. <laughs> Please drink your water. <laughs> so I believe Una has questions that um our audience had put So yeah, as the were RSVPing, there were questions that came through. Um I want to start with this one. It says How did any of the panelists practically keep the faith throughout life's challenges the highs and the lows especially in their younger years or rather how did they deal with doubts pertaining to their faith So um I want to add to it in that I know you're a pastor you're a pastor you have a huge following and you preach the gospel but in a more practical personal way in your own spaces right influence is not just about the big numbers or following because personally i 
I don't even think I have 200 followers on my Instagram, but I can't make that excuse. It as well. Say again? I don't, I don't think so. I'm not sure. I just got back on Instagram. But anyway, um, I can't limit my influence to Instagram. I don't even know how to use it properly, honestly. I don't even know how to post the stories perfectly. How do I handle the life challenges like this guy said, but also be a good example to those who are around me in a more practical way? So how do you keep the faith? How did you keep up with your faith? And with the doubts that came up with it, I want you to be more practical in your own personal life so that we can grab from it. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I think maybe let me talk about where I'm at right now, uh, just to give context. So Musa Church, uh, we're doing okay, you know. And, uh, you know, that, that comes like, with... Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I want to smack him. <laughs> and, and it's amazing. It, it comes with attention, da-da-da-da-da. And, and I'm like, you know, the, the, the one thing that is very common amongst young pastors who come into some influence is that the, the opposite gender comes quite close, right? Yeah. So, Mfundis. yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. So, there, there are, so there's, there's four people. It's my wife and three friends. They have access to all my social media accounts. Oh, wow. They have passwords to all my social media accounts. Wow. They have my WhatsApp on their laptops wow. Wow. because um, I am not going to rely on my willpower mm. because there will be a day where my willpower will be overridden by, yeah. like I lost my mom two weeks ago. Mm. I'm in a very down yeah. space, fragile space. Mm. And I call this guy and says, in this season more than ever, come close. Yeah. Yeah. And make sure that you hold me accountable. Mm. Make sure that you are you are you guard the call of God mm. upon my life. Yeah. That's the practice of it. Mm. Being intentional mm. about your purity. Yeah. Yeah. Being intentional mm. about fighting for mm. your calling, yes. fighting for your life, fighting for your relationship with God. Mm. Expose yourself to accountability. Seek it like run after it and say, I, I want. So that's how I, I'm handling it now because I'm realizing that, hey, this thing is taking off. Yeah. And I need to make sure that it's, it has longevity. Mm. And if it's going to have longevity, I need men and women of faith yes. who will hold me accountable. It's not always nice. It's not always nice. Most yeah, most <laughs> times it's not at all. <laughs> because I remember one Sibo, he once responded to a girl on my DMs. <laughs> this girl is like <laughs> oh, so Sipo is like our friend. Yeah, he's he's like, like, <laughs> yeah. <he's laughs> so this girl sends me a text and says, Hey Fundisi, I would like to get some counseling and she tells me a story. Then my friend Ari, these are the church's numbers. Uh, yeah, that sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> like He's like an he's HR like, manager. Yeah, 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 it sounded like an yeah, HR like, response. Yeah, yeah he's <laughs> like, uh, these are the church's numbers. You are welcome to uh, call us and then we'll get people to contact you. Mm. Uh, that was the end of the story. So you need to be intentional about accountability. Yeah, that's, that's me. Yeah, so good. Sure. I think, I think for me, obedience man I think I think obedience at the very core you know I'm remembering us as young girls like we were very strict we were almost unpopular yeah. for Jesus like like and we were called all sorts of names and we were ridiculed you know I just thank God that we I called us that we were kings and priests meaning we were like you know, smashing it when it comes to Jesus stuff, but we were also doing well in school. We were in the top 10, we were excelling, which I really think is important as a young person. Yeah. Yes. The, don't, don't be the one that prays but doesn't work hard and yeah. does not become diligent. And I think we were that, and that kept us in line in searching for God, but also we participated. 
right? I think a lot of young people are, are, are waiting for things to fall on their lap. They're not ready to serve. They're not ready to sit under anyone. They're not ready for accountability. You know, I remember my first boyfriend, he was white. His name is Andrew. Shout out. Andrew just got married. Clap for him. <laughs> Shout out, Andrew. <laughs> um, is, and this li- is this life? <laughs> Shout out. I'm just asking, are we live now? Shout out to Andrew no, and no, his no, beautiful yeah. wife. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> And, and, and they did the whole thing at church. They were like, oh, what's going on between you and Andrew? We're like, oh, no, we like, okay. And then it was like a whole meeting. And back then it felt so formal. I was just like, man, we're like kids, yeah, man. Yeah, like, yeah. We're, we're like teens. Yeah, like, we're yeah. just, he, my boyfriend, I'm his girlfriend. That's pretty much as far as it goes. Yeah, we, yeah. we do church duties together. That's how cute we were. Yeah. But they instilled in us that there was a level of accountability that yeah. we had. Right? Then on the home front, my mom is that girl right she catches you watching something that's a bit weird on tv tomorrow morning six o'clock we've got bible study (laughs) and that bible study is very curated to what we saw on generations do you know what i mean it's very curated but it held us accountable right and she kept on saying and those are things that we grew up sure. with and, and, and it created an environment of obedience. There's a lot of young Christians that are living their lives under the banner of Christianity but have absolutely no regard for obedience. I get shocked that I go to Christian events and people clap that I'm a virgin. Christians clap that I'm a virgin. That's weird for me. It's mandatory. What else were you expecting me to be? You know, it's like you clapping for a mother who's breastfeeding you. Oh, what a great mother you are. I cannot believe you're feeding this child for the third time today. What were you expecting? What were you expecting? It's mandatory. But what it shows you is, is that there's a lack of discipline. That, that, that we're choosing the things that we want to pick. You know, we're choosing the things that we want to follow. We're choosing the things that we want to lean on and, and neglecting those things that are of a discomfort. The way you speak, right? First, Matthew, First Timothy 4 verse 12, that you will, in your youth, the Bible speaking specifically to young people, that you will set an example in purity, in love, in faith. But we want to just choose one bit of it. And then if one of us succeeds in it, as if it's the end of the world, like, oh my God, I can't believe you made it to your 30s and your virgin. What a great, no, standard. So I think there's a lot of things that are mandatory that we've made it seem like there's a special grace for it. Like, oh no, God has given you a grace for that. No, God has given me the grace to wait and he's also given you the grace to wait. God has given me the grace for obedience. He's also given you the grace for obedience. He didn't choose that he's going to enable you and disenable me in that space. So I think accountability, I agree uh, with Murutuko Ketso. Second one is, is don't slack on the obedience. Salvation comes at a cost. You will be called schizophrenic. You will be called crazy. You will be called backwards. You will be called, you know, the one as in Bukhalingyana. You will be called all sorts of names. But that's the cost. And you've got to choose then that am I going this way or am I going that way? Your surroundings are key. You must have a friend like Sipo who will respond. Yeah. <laughs> you must have people who will tell you the truth about you. That friend, I see you every Sunday laying prostrate before the Lord. And there's no way that you're in the spirit every single Sunday. You must have, be, you must have people around you who go, Hey, you know, I, I see you going to church and I see you posting. But, but, but the way you talk to your mom, brah, there's no honor there. You must have people around you who will tell you the truth about you. Not your Instagram version. But the real you, yes. the one that wastes money, the one that's not trustworthy, that's not reliable, the one that lies, gossips, the one that is, we must tip, tiptoe around you because we're not feeling sorry, who's always offended. The Bible says, do not be offended. You're the first to cry and to fall. But every day your life is not changing. So choose the people around you like a toothpick. Of the bill tongue. Patiently. Like how did, how did, how did, patiently trying to find it. 
I don't know, when last did you have biltong? You know, there's, there's a, sorry, this is a very bad analogy. But if you've eaten biltong, kaponama esras, kapobo mango. No. Let me tell you why. It's because when you take the toothpick, you've got to be strategic. It's either you're coming into the front of the tooth, or we like a raulan. And depending on the severity of how stuck it is, you take your time. You'll start here with a nice covering because you want to be polite. By the time the conversation, oh, well, <laughs> so take your time yes. pick your friends correctly yes. know that is it from the front or is it from the back or is it from the side just because you are close to me and we do the same subject doesn't mean you have to be my friend or my confidant just because we go to the same church and we hang out together yeah it's fine in the convos doesn't mean you're my confidant some of us have chosen the wrong people in our lives yes. who are not telling us the truth and influencing us in the wrong direction so Obedience is my answer. Stephen, Stephen Fettig says, Stephen Fettig says, we must choose our friends not out of common interest, but common values. Mm. That's it. That, That's toothpick. That's it. That's the toothpick. That's toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> take your time. Yeah. If the toothpick doesn't work, take a paper, fold it up in a corner, baby. Make that point. Find the friends. Yeah. Sure. I, I don't have enough toothpicks for days, but... <laughs> <laughs> when this one is there because Just he never lies you know we laughed about it but when I was driving home I was like Lord yeah. that's what's up that's a real statement yeah that's what's up yeah that's what's real say it again you know yeah. <laughs> yeah, like when you can't trust this guy to lie to auditors because he never lies mm. he will tell them to, to the truth every time they come and audit I hope TJ is not there because he's going to tell them the truth and, sure. and I want to speak about how when we are practical about it it ministers practically to the people around absolutely us. You know, it's not, it's not a vague, it's not a vague condition. Yeah. It's not a vague condition. A couple of weeks ago, a Jennifer slid into my DMs on my, on my WhatsApp. Yeah. Is that her actual name? It's, it's an actual Shout name. Shout out, Jennifer. Oh. Don't do it again, baby. <laughs> <laughs> my Jennifer, Leave the, God. <laughs> Leave the men of God. Leave the men of God. Please, Please Jennifer. <laughs> the church's address is... <laughs> I beg you, Jennifer. I have a feeling I'm going to regret this, but anyways. <laughs> but she, she slid into my DM and, and, and she said to me, hi, I'm, so, I'm, I'm friendly. I'm like, hi, what's up? How are you doing? I didn't even know it was a Jennifer. She says, no, it's Jennifer. So you know that it's Jennifer, like we know each other? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa, Jennifer, I'm hi. Jennifer from the block. block. I'm, still, I'm still Jenny from the block. <laughs> you still have it? Sorry. Sorry, let me be here. we brought you here. But anyways... <laughs> So, so when, it, when it happened, immediately I said, no, I'm not too sure, but pictures came. Um, and when I, when I say pictures, I mean pictures came. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying when I say pictures came? Pictures came. <laughs> Do you have a projector where we want to see? <laughs> So, so because it's practical. Yeah, it's practical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it practical. It's practical. Put it there. Put it there. Put, put the picture of Jennifer there. We want to see Jennifer. We'll blur her face. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I, I, I wonder if I'll be able to finish the story. You will regret it. There's two here. But anyways, so so when that happened, immediately what I did is I screenshot. I sent my wife. I'm like, hey. Jenny's here. Hey. Ah, 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 ah. Hey. Jenny from the block. Jenny is in the block. Yeah, Jenny, Jenny yeah. is in the block. It's not J-Lo, but it's okay, let's leave it. But Jenny's here. You know, and I was like, whoa. So immediately what, what, I was, what I was telling the guys when we met and I was telling them about this thing, I said, one of the things is you must believe, not, not necessarily believe, but you must accept that you are flawed. Yes. That's so one of the good. most practical things you have to do in your yeah. life. So good. Yeah. You have to accept you are flawed. So, yeah. You have not arrived. Yeah. You, are, you are not in this pedestal of cleanliness that, that you have made it in life. You are the holier than thou. Yeah. And you are the epitome of what everybody desires to be. And you know why Jennifer was sent to my wife? Is because then Jennifer does not remain a secret. Yes. Yeah. Jennifer is in the open. Mm. Now she's dead to all of us. She's, she's to yeah. all of us. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And, and I want to say, I want to say the practical stuff, right? So constantly, my life has always been about if something is off, let me expose it. Yeah. yeah. Because sin is powerful in secret. Yeah. That's good. 
Absolutely. That's where it draws its power from. Yeah. It needs a dark space and it needs to be kept alone with you. And once it stays like that, then it has a hold on yeah, you. Absolutely. And that's why God was saying to 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 um, Cain. He says, "It's knocking on your door." Yes. Yeah. Man, if you do not deal with it now, this thing is going to rule over you. And guess what? It ruled over him. Absolutely. Because nobody taught him how to kill. Nobody showed him where to hit or nobody showed him where to step. He just knew. And sin teaches you when it's in secret. Yeah. It becomes your minister. Yeah. It ministers to you. Yeah. Sure. It, it begins to preach to you. Yeah. And says to you this and that and that and that. And it now, because it's in secret. If you want to be able to live the pragmatic and the practical life, do not keep that thing a secret. Absolutely. Do not keep it a secret. Yeah. My mom says this, and I've said this story so many times, and I'm going to share it again. My mom says this years ago. She said to me that bring bring a kettle of water uh, to the to the fields. She was at the fields. That's why my wife is the one that likes gardening, not me, because it reminds me of. 4 a.m. in the morning. But anyways. It's okay. It's okay. I'm, I've not healed from it. <laughs> so, so she says to me, bring a kettle of, of hot water. So I rush, boil the water, bring the kettle of... And she, she pours the water into the hole. And when she poured the water into the hole, a big snake came out. She chopped the head. And here's a lesson she said. She said... But then, yeah, no, no, talk, talk. Hey, man. Hey, hey, I, I'm just saying, I didn't, I didn't uh, expect it to turn like that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Chop the head. Uh. It's a horror movie. And she says the following. She says, you need to take the snake into the light. Because you know the light better than it does. Sure. You don't Shout throw the mom. snake into its sure. hole. Sure. Wow. Because it knows all the corners in yeah. that hole. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, can't, you cannot be in a, a situation, I'm going to use Tuso as an example, you're going to be in a situation where you can feel everything about you is changing when you're next to her. Yeah. And you say, can we have a meeting together? Uh, ah, uh, uh, uh. You are following the snake into the hole. Yeah. 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 That scene knows that, yeah, so. that, that call, those corners better sure. than you. Sure. And you see, the problem is we are so caught up in what we have kept secretive. Mm. And it's killing us secretly yeah. because we believe we cannot open it up into that space yeah. and bring it out. And lastly, friends like this, no, DJ Spoo is not here, but friends like this. <laughs> you are too young, but yeah, let's oh continue. Awesome. Put, your, put, put your faith in a friend. <laughs> andile, andile. <laughs> andile. And We're going with the cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we're old. Oh, man. The kind of friends I would have... Okay, let's leave it. But, but I, I, I feel that we need to be so... Whenever somebody is hurt or killed by sin within your presence, before you ask why they didn't tell me, ask yourself, why, who was I that they couldn't tell? Yeah. Sure. Good. Not why they couldn't open up to me, but who am I that they can't open up to me? Yeah. Let us take the responsibility as a church that we've created an environment, and I'm going to say this, this is my last piece and my offering yeah. on this question. I believe Jesus is looking for a great and awesome church. He's coming back for an awesome bride. As we sit here, I don't actually sit in the position where I think Jesus is seeking a perfect church amongst us, but he's seeking a repentant church. Yeah. Sure. Because the matter of perfection is very hard for us to achieve. <clears throat> So he sits there and he's a high priest who sympathizes with all our weaknesses because he's been there. So he sits there and he says, all I need from you is repentance. Repent. And it starts with the prefix re. Do it over and over again. When you fall, rise up again. When you mess up, clean up again. When you miss the mark, man, stand up and say, I missed the mark, guys. How can I hit the mark? And then we become a collective that will be able to make sure that you don't miss out on running the race and finishing it. Um, all right, I think this one, yes, I because you are pastors, eh? Like you are really taking your time, uh, but this one only Rory San can answer this one because it's directed to Amen. her. Um, it says, How do you know it's time to start using your voice for ministry, especially as someone who would already have influence? I ask in the case of Sis Rory Sang, although she's always been a Jesus girl, she's only pushing Jesus this, Jesus that now, when it seems she could have easily started any time prior. Yeah. Basically, how do you know it's time? Sure, you don't. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> That's the answer. That's you, you, actually, you actually don't. Um, 
quick story so that I don't quickly preach. So how Jesus, I lost my best friend on the 14th of January, 2023, and shook me to the core. One of my last conversations with her was that we were going to go do amazing things for God. So I've always toyed with the idea of like doing stuff for Jesus. Um, she always thought I was called for ministry. My answer is still teka teka ring for that. Uh, but her passing made me, there was nothing else for me to run to, but to start declaring this Jesus, because otherwise I wasn't going to cope. So I literally woke up one morning, I said something about Jesus, because that's what the Holy Spirit was saying. Also the Holy Spirit would like throw you in the deep end, because now you're pushing cool, now you're having to post stuff, you know what I mean? And this girl in the, in this, in the DM says to me, you're always talking about Jesus. And I was like, yeah, la, la, what Jesus is, Jesus is that. Make it so you quite deal. And like, unfollow la, la. Like, if you feel that my Instagram is always, just unfollow the button. But it's come bully on my platform. You know what I mean? And, and I said, and I said it in passing. And I was like, and like, Rebo Jesus is, Jesus is that. Then people started changing their profiles to Jesus is, Jesus is that, right? Then to rub it in, because that's, you know, I win at Monopoly, so I will rub it in. I went to go print t-shirts that day. Me and my brother were like, and like rub it t-shirt, rub it t-shirt, la la. Ran kadi photo shoot in the middle of Cosmo, kick not mukel we commissioned that street. But Barry was like, can we want the t-shirts? And the Holy Spirit is like, we are not in the business of t-shirts. We're in the business of declaring Jesus to the world. That same day, I want you to understand the timeline. I came back from radio in the early hours. I said something that the Holy Spirit said I must say on my social media. I woke up to go to the bathroom, come back, girl, I text me, I attack back, I sleep, I wake up angry, I attack back, Jesus is Jesus, that is happening while I'm sleeping. I wake up, because I'm me, I make a t-shirt. I come back, people are asking for the t-shirt. I'm getting newspaper, magazine, calls, get to wait a lot. But Jesus is Jesus, that no, man, relax. That same day we printed the t-shirts, is the same day I went to go book Joburg Theatre. When we were driving back with my brother, I said, I don't know where the money's going to come from. But I know that the Holy Spirit is saying it's free and that we must do it now. So I don't think there's like a set time that you know. But what I can say, that relationship with God allows you the opportunity to run with the things that he says. And sometimes it's in the form of Jesus, this, Jesus, that. Sometimes it's in a form of platforms that you guys don't see. Right? It's at two o'clock in the morning when I take a stranger woman and put her in my car. That's me, Jesus, this thing, Jesus, that thing. It's just not packaged or it's not out there on social media like one would say. So uh, I've always, I believe I've always gone hard for God. I think that God will tell you what you need to do, when you need to do it. Again, I repeat, can only happen in relationship. But I don't think, I don't think there's a special moment where oh, it happens and whatnot. Uh, but what I am conscious of right now, that is the difference between then and now is what he was saying that the accountability and the people I'm putting around myself, you know, I'm going to my mom and asking questions, you know. The other day I was sitting with the Dada I was like, yo, I grew up in front of you. How do you do this? Like, what is this? <laughs> you know, I'm going to go, all the people that I've, and funny enough, when you look up, God has already placed people in front of you. You just, I just didn't see them like that. I didn't see that it was, a, but God is now going, go speak to that person. Ask this one a question. Get on the phone with that one go here so again i don't think it's a moment i think it's a lifestyle can i just say something Rorisa? when the children of israel leave egypt there was an idol that fell yeah. and in between they they're walking and then later they raise for themselves another idol the idol of hierarchy and uh, men of God has fallen. We are in a gap. And God is raising you in that gap. Before we create for ourselves another idol. Because if, if this gap is there for too long, because a lot of people don't know, okay, now the pastors, it's no longer about the hierarchies and the church where they were questioning everything. Sure. Now what? And it's in the gap before we raise for ourselves another idol. Sure. The Bible says, after the reign of Joseph, another generation arose that did not know God nor his exploits because no one stood 
in that gap. So he's raising you in the gap and you are not going to look like the previous. It's not going to look like, it's not going to look like, there's no point of reference for what you are trying to do because it's in the gap, no one knows it. No one understands and it's going to offend a lot of us because we don't understand what you are doing. Keep going. Well, that sinks in. <laughs> um, we're going to give the audience an opportunity to ask our panelists questions. This is um, a conversation after all. So if you have a question, you can just raise your hand or stand and Una will come and give you a mic to ask your question. We have a hand there. Oh, yeah. Um, hi guys, I'm part of the teenage um, program within the youth in our church. My question is, as young, very young people, in my opinion, how do we stay rooted in our Christianity? Because we live in a generational way, it's more of we want to look this way then stay rooted in our Christianity because being a Christian or being religious is it's weird. Mm. It's seen as unpopular anymore. So my question is, how do I, as a young Christian in the church, but not in the church, in high school, from high school going to varsity, and from varsity being a young woman in society, how do I stay in my Christianity. I got one answer. Define the call. Yeah. Define it. Because yeah. if, if, you, if you don't define the call and what that means, you run the risk of somebody else defining what your call is. I want us all to think about the cool kid at school. If you were ever in school, I hope we all went to school. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about the cool kid, right? Oftentimes, there were different types. There were the naughty kids that became cool by virtue of being them naughty. There were the cool kids who, because they were rich, they automatically became cool. But then there was a group of cool that they didn't look or sound like everybody else, and they almost kind of forced us to accept them as cool. Yeah. Their hair was different. They wore their tops different. Gassivisi, you could see they cut their clothes in a way. In the beginning, it was a bit weird, but at some point, we had to go, yo, man, it's so cool that this person is so authentically themselves that I am forced to receive you as you are, right? And I think what we do is, as Christians, we live in a world of pretense. We're pretending to speak in tongues. We're pretending to having a relationship with God. We're pretending to reading our word while we're Googling. We're pretending to be seeking his face. So when we come to the world, we're pretending. And because we've in the nature of pretending, then it's also the nice, well not, it's, the, it's a natural progression to even pretend to be like everyone else. Because in your separate life, in your holy space, in your space where you're supposed to be seeking God, you're still pretending. But if we're truthful in our walk with God, say, hey man, I, st I, don't, still don't, I, don't, I still don't know how to speak in tongues. It's okay. Don't rabba kaba 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 shaka and copy what the person next to you is doing. Just because in that moment you're trying to salvage a cool. So the cool is not only outside. We do cool in church as well. We watch each other, what this one says, how this one prays. Also, what about beloved? Man, homie, when did you start speaking like that? <laughs> You know what I mean? Now that there's somebody like shalom a ch my you, shalom, shalom, my brother. <laughs> and you're like, you know, he's hello, what do I? I'm like, I haven't heard that one, okay? I just know you are a gyro. And it's enough. He is enough. It's you enough. know what I mean? It's enough. So I think, I think, I think, define the call. Right? Yeah. Understand that there is nothing that this world can offer you. There is nothing that this world can offer you that God firstly has not already given you. Right, and if you live in that truth, 
really what everybody else does, and I know as a teen or as a young person, it's a difficult concept, but the people who usually make it in life are the people who follow that principle. Anybody that you think is dope, even outside of the Christian circle, are people who said, everybody is doing it that way, I'm going to do it this way. And 10 years later, we all lift up our heads and we're following them. So even in our walk with Christ, if we pursue him and we define the cool, that I'm cool for loving Jesus. I'm cool for not cussing. I'm cool for not acting like that. I'm cool for being whatever I am that God has called me to be. So define it so that nobody has to do it for you. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. You mentioned different stages, teen, varsity, now you're a woman. Society has a picture or a prototype for all of those seasons you're talking about. It means you're jumping from one to the another. You're waiting for them to tell you, oh, a woman is somebody who wears dresses and sits like this and does this. Now I'm going, but I don't like that vibe though. Now I'm uncomfortable with myself. So define the cool. The world will follow. I think additionally, while the next question comes on what we're saying is also the earlier Jesus is not a concept to you and is a lifestyle to you, the sooner you don't feel uncomfortable about the negative of you being a believer. And, and, and many a times we, we feel uncomfortable. I'm, I'm going to be so blunt in what I'm going to say. We're, so, we're even uncomfortable about just praying for food. What's going on? Like how? You know? Um, and and we, you I had to, on that point, I have to add this. Yeah. In a flight, and he was like, this is not a religious space. I was like, what? what? If this thing drops, my dude, the best I would have said a word of prayer to God. And he found it offensive that I, that I stopped and I prayed. Then I got on an Emirates flight, and they, hum, 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 before we take off. And I was like, ha. Ah. Because they're not ashamed of what they believe. They solidified. Sorry. And, and you know why it's acceptable? Because they, they started early to drive this narrative. Yeah. We are who we are. It's either you accept us or you don't. Yeah. Well, this, this afternoon I was driving, I was driving and, and I was listening to radio, talk radio. And they, I won't mention the bank, but they, meant, they brought in a, a, you know, a representative to represent the Islamic section of that bank. I, I said that, I said, what? Like, how? Where is the Christian section of this bank? Mm. Like I was sitting there and I was just, these people are not ashamed. They, they, are, not, they are not apologetic. Can, can I stick there for a second? Do not apologize of your faith. Yeah. No, don't apologize. Somebody comes to you at school and says, I'm sick. Can I pray for you? Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now, let me lay hands on you and pray for you. Why are you praying for me? You're not a pastor. The Bible did not say, pastor shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. Can I just say something? We went to an air show the other day at the military. And we're standing. Everything is happening. Uh, there are flies and everything. And literally, this guy in front of us with his two children lays down a mat, goes down on his knees. I think it was like one. I think they do it at a, in, in the afternoon. They start doing the whole thing. And initially, it's the son who does it first. Then once it's done, he gets out of the mat. The daughter comes. That's the same thing. We are all watching the air show. They are minding their own business. They didn't go to look for a different room or something. They were doing it in front. You even have a video. You took a video. I do. They were sitting down. Like, dude, they did everything. Probably like 15 to 30 minutes. We just looked at them and we minded our business and they just continued. And once they were done, they were done. The most powerful thing is they didn't go to the car to fetch the mat. Yeah. Oh, they came wow. with it. They oh. had the mat. They had it. From the beginning of the show, they had the mat. Yeah. Right, we leave our mats, yeah. which is our Bible. Hey, hey. We leave it in the car, we leave it on our phones. That's yeah. what the app you should open. I actually want you to open this app. Hey, so, hey. so we do it by chance, we don't do it by intention. Yeah. Right, and this is key to us as a generation. If we are not intentional about this, I, I tell you the truth, we are going to sit here and there'll be nobody in those seats because we never groomed the next generation yeah. to come. Sykes. Wow. They go, wow. They go home early on Friday. Yeah. They stop their businesses. Wait, they close down. You wait in the store they for them down. to open. Yes. They are praying. They are praying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
Um, thank you, thank you, everyone. I don't think I have a direct question, but um, I think mine is around surrendering. Like, how do you know it's the spirit of God that you're surrendering to? I think being black and being exposed to a lot of things and you just get into a lot of spaces and people they will tell you that you have a calling and then this is like you are so godly and then this one is just like and then you have dreams and stuff and just like okay what's going on <laughs> because what is this you know and growing up and I had chosen chosen like from a very very young age I was just like a very um Fortunately, my parents, they let me be the person that can just say, I want to go to church. And then I'll go to church without even my parents going to church and like that. So I think for me, it's, I, I think I've, I'm struggling with um, surrendering. I don't know, is it God I'm surrendering to or it's the other spirits or like, um, because I got baptized like two weeks ago. Yes. I, The trick with that is I was also expecting that some things would fall off like automatically and then I'm just like okay I thought I would be yeah. like craving alcohol because I'm baptized because I've had stories where people are like is it the soon as I got out of that water I was new you know <laughs> Like, so it, you, you're a new creation. So I was just like, okay, I was expecting this part of me to die with that water. So like now, I think like just being realistic and just like with the surrendering, some days I would wake up and be like, you know what, today the first thing I want to do is to just like offer a worship, you know. And some days it's just like, mm-hmm, nah, never, not today, you know. So I think my question is around surrendering. Like, how do you get yourself into that? How do you drive yourself and center your own, ground yourself into surrendering? And also uh, um, with the mental illness and stuff like that is going on. And because most of the times they will tell us, no, it's not a spiritual thing. You're just like going through a mental phase and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, Unfortunately, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's a guy who came to to me. He was coming from another church, and uh, they had, you know, dedicated them to weird stuff, you know. And then he said to me, Maruti, can you can you pray for me for deliverance, you know, so that you can this thing can can leave me? And I said, we have bought into mysticism. We love instant encounters. We want to feel things. And, and, and I'm like, the word, the Bible says, he will wash his bride by the washing of his word. Deliverance happens when we learn the right things. So it's in the discipleship. Don't wait for the feeling. As the word is washing you, you are growing. So, so it's in the presence of God, in the word of God, with the people of God. So prioritize a time of worship, personal devotion. Prioritize time in the word. Go to discipleship. Seek discipleship. Go to someone and say, please teach me the things of God. And spend time with the people of God. Anything that wants to take you away from the presence of the, and, and don't worry, don't worry about the alcohol. You, you will, one day, you will just, oh, well, well yeah, what, <laughs> like, well, you know, it, if I tell you how I was when I got born again, man, I had a piercing here. I had chains. I had, oh, dreadlocks. Haley Jesus Silas. did a good work, eh, man? Come on. <laughs> Jesus worked it out. And, and these guys, two guys born again, they laughed on me and they would pick me up from my girlfriend's house, take me to church and drop me back at my girlfriend's. And I just, I was just, I was just, until someday I'm like, hey man, I'm two idiots, I'm more excited about that. And she found me having packed my bags. 
and I went to this guys with my bags. I said, guys, I'm moving in with you guys. They're like, huh? okay, come in. Yeah, come in. <laughs> because they were discipling me. Yeah. And they're walking a journey with me. Because what the devil is going to do, when you have a sip, he's going to say to you, see, that baptism didn't work. It's a lie. He's a liar. Pursue discipleship. You're going to be okay. That's beautiful. I want to say to the rest of us, and not just you, that we, we are disablers or enablers of growth in this journey of faith. We are an environment. We are a space that either kills or encourages a new believer in the faith. Right? And, and we must not now just make it your responsibility. We as a church, just like what Mugutu Gogeta says, those guys received him with his bags. We are ready to receive you with the baggage. And God will begin to work it out. And God will begin to put it off and to put it down. And, and, and I think lastly, God has raised us up as a generation that is not afraid to tackle such conversations and such realities. We will spend time really, and if, if you want to sit with us and say, I want to sit and understand what's the difference between, uh, you know, upasha and, and worship. What's the, we can sit down and say, the scriptures say this, and literally disciple and say, this is what needs to happen. That's what Jesus, so that's what Paul did to, um, um, not Paul, Peter, did to uh, Simon the Sorcerer. He said to him, no, no, this power is not for sale. Yeah. <laughs> This, this Holy Spirit, he was a sorcerer, he was a witch. And when he repented, he saw what they were doing through the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, I want to buy this power. Can, can I purchase it? And, and Peter says, nonsense, you can't purchase Let's disciple you. Come sit here. Let's journey with so you good. and carry you into the place which will bring you to the reality. And we are all involved here. Yeah. We can carry or we can kill. Yeah. We must decide what we want to do. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah, I think it's important to ask yourself, who are you carrying around you? Um, you can't do the Christian journey by yourself. Uh, you need a community around you, and you also need to be carrying other people. I had a friend who said to me, no, I grew so strongly when I was alone. Lies. You know, I, I was so strong in the last. Lies. 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 It's not, it, no. it's not true. It's not true. It does. You're not strong. Yeah. Yeah. They, not. they don't know yet. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, they yeah. don't. They don't they know yet. Been hit yet. Yeah, yeah. No. they don't know yet. You need to surround yourself with the community. Okay. Mm. Um, I have this question. Okay, this must be straightforward. No preaching. All of you, the mm. three of you, please. No, just straightforward. Just one panelist can answer this. Okay. Um, it says how? No, no, no. Sorry. Uh, what are more ways to connect to God and feel closer to Him? Uh, when He says more ways, I guess you have other ways like pray, go to church. So what are more ways to serve? Yeah. Perfect. Wow. I'll follow suit with one word answer. Relate. Yeah. yeah. Relate to God. I'll also say something. What they said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> serve. <laughs> serve. Okay. serve. Serve and relate. Serve. Serve. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, don't be found lacking yeah. Yeah. in that area. And serving this doesn't mean in your church, you must serve in your church. But it also means serve your community, serve your family, serve. Wherever you are, there's a heart to give. I think it's in Luke 22, uh, where they ask Jesus, is it better to be sitting at the table or the one serving? And he's like, I, as Jesus myself, I've come to serve. So if you want to see that you're beginning to emulate Jesus or be like him, the first place that you'll know is, do I have a serving heart? If yes. house nana you know, you you you're always you're inaccessible. You 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 don't want to really do anything. Yeah, the whole packing up of chairs after church or or helping the old lady in the street. Then you must question yourself. So other ways, serve. Find an opportunity to serve in your workspace, at school, in your church, your friends. Serve. And I think, uh, unfortunately, service has been unfortunately zoned down to, to a certain space. But serving is, is literally, is literally somebody says, I'm depressed. Yeah. It's a hard posture. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a posture. You take it and you say, you're depressed. Can I, can I share a word with you and pray with you right now? That's service. That's service. Somebody in the text says, I'm not feeling too well. 
Can I pray with you right now? That is service. And if we can be able to master the reality of service in its true form, we will not preach more than what we're doing right now. We'll preach less. Because our lives are already the testimony and the reality of who we are. I love that. Uh, I would like you to speak about serving. Because um, I went to your church during a leadership um, thing. You talked about serving in that sense that now that you are a leader, you understand the importance of service and serving people. Because we want the platform. We want to be up there. But we don't want to start off in serving. Can you speak to that? You said something so powerful on it. I said something there. Then, yes. Please remember. I know. It's, in, it's, it's somewhere in there. He was under the influence yeah. of the... <laughs> he, he was drunk in the spirit. He, was, yeah, no, he can't no, remember. He's I awake can't, I can't remember what, what I said. Yeah, no, I, I can't remember what I said. I think for me, guys, it's, a, it's like I, 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 I eat a piece of burger, right? And I'm like, wow, this is so good. Rory... You have got to taste this. Baker King, you Bacon know. King. You have got to taste this. Yeah. And then I share it with, it must, I mean, when was the last time you watched a movie and you're like, wow, this is a great movie and then you just keep quiet. Never happens. Yeah. You want to share it with yeah. someone yeah. because yeah. you're like, yo man, it's, it's, yeah. it's, um, it's too it's, good, it's to, too keep good to keep to myself. Yeah. This Jesus must be just too good to keep to ourselves and when we say what we're doing is we are removing barriers and we are creating an environment so that people can come and meet this Jesus Absolutely. you're like man I just want as many people as possible to come and see oh man listen guys it's amazing it's a love like you know I met a guy now in the UK and he says he had never been to church ever. It was the first time he's 24 years old. And he comes to church and we're praying. Da, 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 and then he leaves. And then I asked him, so how was the experience for you? He's like, I got the same high I get when I'm on drugs. Come on. Come on. But I don't have a hangover. Yeah. So good. Come on. <laughs> you know, I'm like, the reason I serve is because I want more people to come and experience that. Come get this high. To come and get this high, you know, and they just leave and go like, dude, this is it, man. This is it. So it's not the answer I gave then. I don't know what I said. <laughs> but but this is... It's a new anointing. It's a new... Fresh yes. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Yeah. Last comment. John 15, 18. Jesus says, when they hate you, remember that they hated me, me also. Sure. first. When you go and become who Christ has called you to become, one of the first signals will be hate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you are expecting the world to clap for you, you have another thing coming. So leave this place understanding that you're going to lose business deals. You're going to lose contracts. You're going to lose relationships. There are other relationships that are sustained by sin. Yeah. When you stop sinning, the relationship will end. Yes. Let me be a bit more blunt. The day you close your legs, the relationship will end. Yes. You must be prepared for that. If we are not preparing you for that, we are not telling you the truth. Absolutely. There is a, that's why it costs, it, Jesus invites us, die. Because if you do not die to yourself, you will not make it out there. Because the world is going to want to, to kill you for this gospel. All the apostles were martyred. Yeah. All, all of them. With the exception of the one who hung himself. But all of them. Even the replacement. And when we say Jesus no, this, actually. Jesus that, we are saying we are ready yeah. to die mm. for this thing. Yeah. 
it's nice when we are like this but we are like today it's nice and the guys it is coming the persecution is coming I would love to say to you your blessings are coming the favor is coming the job is coming the car is coming no the persecution is coming and it's closer than we realize so prepare yourself be convinced that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior because that will help you in that moment where they say denounce this Jesus and you say I've already given him my life so what you are going to take right now is is nothing you will hurt this flesh but I have already given him my life is gone. So you are killing a dead man. That season is coming. And it's upon us. Make that conviction and that decision. Pastor, there's a new tagline and it's happening. When people see churches do well and they say, there's a revival coming. <laughs> and everybody gets excited God has never stopped speaking yeah. so if we think he's going to speak or he is now only speaking we are very misled yeah. but a revival is awakening of something that was once dead sure. and I believe that God is in the business of waking things up but he doesn't wake them up so that they can be cute in their form when he raises the dead bones he turns them into an army. So if really, let's take it for what it is, a revival is at the brink. It means a war yeah. is at the brink. Yeah. So my question then to us is, are we in the forefront? Can God trust us in the front line of this war? We want to sing about a revival is coming. We want to feel good and tag that it's a revival. It's not a revival if there's no war. Yeah. God awakens in us the fire because he sees that which is coming our way. So the next time you say there's a revival or a revival is coming, your next follow-up question to yourself is, am I part of the army? Am I ready for what is to come? Because if we can't answer that, they perish because of lack of knowledge. And that can't be our generation. We can't be the generation that is cute about our, our form when it comes to God. We can't be the generation that's packaging our words when it comes to God. We cannot afford not to preach a true Jesus. We cannot afford to be afraid to say he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but except through him. We want to make it cute and just stop the verse there. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No, finish it off. Finish it off. If we are truly God's mouthpieces, then we should be telling the truth for what it is, that he is a soon coming king. And if you thought COVID was bad, it was a piece of cake. If you read the Bible for what it is, worse is coming. But to us, that doesn't shake us to our core with fear. It's a reassurance that our maker, our king, the Lord of lords, our savior is coming for us. But because you've taken the piece of bread and you want me to share it, I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want any family member of mine not to make it to glory. I don't want my friends that I did life not to experience this God. So how dare we not speak of him? How dare we not present him? How dare we use our feelings as an excuse? Our past experiences as an excuse? How dare we not share Jesus? So yes, there's a revival. But that means there's an army. And the question is, are you in the army? And can God trust you to be in the front line? And if the answer is honestly no, then go back, repent, seek his face, let the Holy Spirit build you up from the inside and take your position. I know we, we, we're chasing time. And we, we are sitting in a position where yeah, we need to close this thing. But 
we can't close it without any commitment to just saying, Lord, I want to hold your banner up yet again. Yeah, maybe you were, you were known as the prayerful person in your office, in your school, and that fire died down. But the most important thing is that tonight as you leave, that fire is reignited yet again. That fire is reignited and you become the light that cannot be put under the table. You become the lamp that stands tall on a hill and everybody's drawn to it. And I want us to do something important tonight, all of us. None of us is going to be left out of this. All of us, including us that are sitting up here. It's got nothing to, to do with your space, your position or whatever. It's got everything to do with your commitment. And I want us to take the next three minutes or so. And we are recommitting to worshipping you with our lifestyle. We are recommitting to worshipping you with our language. We are recommitting to worshipping with our dress code. We are recommitting to worshipping you with, our, with everything that we are. We want to recommit and surrender to you. And say, Lord, you are king over our lives. You are God over our lives. You are mighty and you are sovereign over our lives. We call you king and we place you as king over our hearts. And I want you, if, you, if you're not injured or anything like that, I want us just to kneel before the Lord this evening. And there's enough space right here in the altar. And I want you to, no one is praying for anybody. No one is, you just draw it close to the Lord. And we kneel before him and I say, I want to commit my life. I want to commit my heart to you, Lord. I want to commit everything that I am to you. This is my heart's desire that, Lord, here I am to say that you are God, you are King. You are my Lord. Oh God. 
throne room of mercy and prayer. Speak with him today. Tonight you bestow your righteousness upon us. we come as young people kneeling before you we could have been anywhere but you made sure that we're here today and Lord God we want to come against any spirit, any demonic force any power or principality that has made itself God over you we nullify it, we burn it from its roots, we say you no longer have space in this life that Father God that we call the devil and all his goons and say they are trespassing we belong to the almighty God. We are his children. We are off bounds. We are off limits. You cannot even come close to us. So whatever the devil has been hanging over our heads. 
Father God, we come in the authority that you've given us. You said the same spirit that is in Jesus that rose him from the dead is the same spirit that dwells within us. We tap into that, Lord God, and that authority. We say you no longer have room in these lives. Father God, I pray that anything that has attached ourselves or we have attached ourselves to, Lord God, that you break those chains tonight, Lord God. That you give us a heart that is ready to repent. We come against pride in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that has made us believe we're at spaces that we have not yet been. We come against pride, Lord God, that has made us feel that we're, we're, too, we're too important to serve you in the way that we can. That has made our careers more priority. That has made our money more priority. That has made our social standard more priority. Lord God, we come against that tonight. Every lie that the devil has put before us. And every lie that we ourselves have walked into. Forgive us where we've gone wrong. Forgive us where we've made it about other things other than you. Forgive us where we've made it about ourselves and not you. Forgive us where we've made it about our society and not you. Forgive us where we've fallen short of your glory. But Father, with repentant hearts tonight, we come before you recognizing that you are God. Father, because we've come to this realization that we cannot do it outside of you, that we cannot do it outside of you, that there is nothing we can attain outside of you, there is nothing we can have the capacity for outside of you. We pray that you make us a generation with an utterance of your name and your word. In John 17, Jesus says, Lord God, I have given them the word that you have given me. May we give this world the word that you have given us ah, yeah. 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 may you give us the utterance the confidence the zeal the tenacity the audacity to declare you as Lord Amen. as King in a world that has little gods we call you the God yeah. in a world that has lords we call you the God. Lord of Lords in a world that has altars and kings we call you the King of Kings give us the utterance our generation give us the utterance to declare you in our homes give us the utterance to declare you in our society give us the utterance to declare you in this nation and beyond lord god we are the ones you're looking for you said that the land is vast but the laborers of you here we are yeah use us yeah. Woo! use us lord. use us lord today because we want to be used by you we want to die today because we want to be used for you we want to die today because we want to be used through you thank you that we will no longer be silent we will no longer be ashamed or unapologetic about what you've done in fact lord god who can we go to who can we turn to who can we call holy who can we call great who can we exalt if not you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, we've spoken about ourselves not being ashamed. Today, in the next few seconds, we just want to lift you yeah. up. Come on, church, use your voice. Just give Him glory. Yeah, yeah, I know we've been talking about us being unashamed and what we can do and how we can be obedient and how we can go into the world and how we can be used by Him and how we can be the ones that He sends out. But for the next two seconds or two minutes, can we just call Him great? do another thing in our lives can we just call him great lord god there's none like you none compares to you none compares to your grace none compares to your mercy none compares to the god that you are you are holy Woo! there is no god like you and lord god we can 
generations. There is none like you. that you are holy and above all things and Lord God if there's anything we remember about today as we walk out these doors is that you are a good God a great God and that there's nothing that this world can offer us that you have not yet already given to us your word tells us that you've given us everything pertaining unto life we let go of the old and we take the new resurrected life with Jesus today it will be in our laws, it will be in our mouths, and in the way we behave and we act. Lord God, we thank you that you've given us both the will and the grace to do it. Holy Spirit, we pray for speed. Speed for our generation. Speed for us to go into the world and tell people about Jesus. We pray for words. We pray that, Lord God, when we come and seek your face, we will hear you loud and clear. That we will be quick to be obedient, quick to hear your word, quick to do the things you have called us to do that nothing will exalt itself above you. You're holy. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you that you've given us the grace and the opportunity to impact our generation. For you said in the book of Acts chapter number 13 that David served his generation and then he laid to sleep. And Father, we will not sleep without serving our generation. We are committed to changing the narrative in our generation. We are committed, oh God, Father, in our offices, in our workspaces, to change the narrative in the name of Jesus. And we declare tonight that we are unashamed. We are not just Christ influencers, but we are Christ thought leaders that change the way of thinking because you have called us to be the light that never dims, oh God, that keeps on shining, oh Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your name and we give you praise. Amen and amen. Come on, let's amen. bless the Lord. Come on, we are clapping and appreciating the goodness of the Lord over our lives. Hallelujah.